Hi, this is Michelle Landsberg, and this morning I am here talking to Lisa Anto with Grace Wind Development. They are doing some exciting things with Beef River Falls. They've got some plans and are moving forward with those, and uh, we would like to learn a little bit more about what they're doing. So welcome, Lisa. Glad Thank to you, uh, have this conversation with you this morning. Maybe could you tell me a little bit about uh, about Gracewind? What is Gracewind? And maybe you know introduce yourself as well. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for the intro and good morning. Uh, I'm Lisa Anto. I'm with Gracewind Development and uh, new and recent uh, resident of Fargo, North Dakota, uh, but formerly of Thief River Falls, uh, which is part of the reason uh, why we are going to be actually uh, placing a Gracewind facility in Thief River Falls. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but on to more exciting things, our um, Gracewind is actually a senior cooperative, which is a really kind of unique type of housing that was actually invented in Minnesota in 1978, uh, the senior cooperative. That whole concept really was born there. And the first cooperative is actually still operational in Edina. Um, it's got about a 16 year waiting list for a three bedroom. And they are very, very popular in the Twin Cities. In fact, there's over a hundred of them in Minnesota alone and they're spreading across the country. So at a time when we're really seeing kind of the industry and senior, the industry trend in senior housing has really been uh, for occupancy rates to be overall really dropping. People don't want to move into this type of housing. Then you have cooperatives, which are completely flying in the face of this and doing the exact opposite. The growth is exploding. People are moving into these things and really loving them. So um, Grace One's a cooperative. And cooperatives are kind of a unique proposition in a few different ways. Um, they really provide an opportunity for an ownership stake for everybody living there. So cooperatives are not rental housing. Um, they're actually uh, congregate housing, but everyone who lives there is an owner uh, and they're owners not only of their residents, which they purchase, uh, but they are also owners in everything else. So all of the common spaces, the building, and even the land that uh, the cooperative itself is built on. So, um, you know, it's a, a really great fit and, um, you know, we've, we've have a lot of belief in this type of, of housing and are excited to bring it to the Thief River area. I love this idea and certainly, you know, having something different, another choice, another alternative, another option. And, uh, you know, uh, being this is the target, uh, the older adult, um, I think I think we really, we really need that. We really need that. Um, we've got a lot of older folks that are looking for something different, maybe some different options or alternatives, a way to maybe simplify their lives. Um, and um, I think this is a great, uh, a great al alternative, a great option, a great opportunity, and and certainly something different than what we've had. So can you can you tell me? Um, how does living in a senior cooperative housing differ from an apartment or townhome? What is the difference? Yeah, I get this question all the time. And, um, you know, there's really a couple of main differences. So the first is really, um, you know, on that ownership side. You do own when you live in a condo, um, obviously, but typically what you have ownership right to is that address or that residence specifically. You know, you, you don't have an ownership stake in the rest of the assets of that property, um, which is a big difference here. You do pay dues typically to, you know, use amenities and, and things like that in a condo. Um, but in a cooperative, you really own all of that. Um, the amenities are also typically um, much greater than in your average condo type of development, particularly in our area. Uh, you know, of Thief River Falls, you know, the amenities we have planned for this building, I think are, are really top notch. Um, so there's that financial side. Um, you know, typically when somebody who's in kind of that 55 plus age band wants to simplify, you know, where, where I grew up in Thief River, you have that trade off of ownership. You know, you have to move to rental to really have that kind of maintenance free, worry free, type of, of lifestyle. Um, but this kind of brings the best of all of that together. It allows you to have ownership, to get the tax benefits of ownership, the pride of that ownership and the decision-making 
uh, aspects of that, um, you know, but you don't have to pay rent, which, you know, I, as a homeowner myself, I can't imagine having to go back and pay rent, you know, later in my later years of my life. Um, that was something I did in college, but I, I love owning my own property and making decisions so that we like to bring that to everybody. So there's the ownership side for sure. Um, the second one I wanted to hit on is really just, again, the amenities are really top notch. Um, so our, our Gracewind property is going to have uh, a woodworking shop, a hobby and craft room, a fitness room, um, probably the top one that everybody loves. And we all know why when we step outside right now, our, it was the underground heated garage for parking and that will have its own car wash in it as well. Um, there's also a community room with the kitchen, a fireside lounge. So um, those really set it apart. Um, and then uh, two, just two other quick things I'll mention. The maintenance side as well, uh, being different from a condo. Typically when you have a condo, you are responsible for your own maintenance within your residence and including your appliance or other repairs you may need. And that's just not the case in the cooperative. The cooperative helps you maintain your residence inside and out. That's all a part of your monthly fees that you pay and all in the budget. So, you know, if your microwave is having problems, you just have to call the property manager at the condo. You don't have to go try to find someone to repair your appliance or washer dryer or what have you, which is a great benefit. And the other one I would say is really just the, the sense of community. It feels very different in a cooperative or as my daughter would probably say the vibe uh, is much different. So there's just, you know, it's a group of people of similar age and typically of interests, all living together, working together in a cooperative way, you know, kind of pun intended there. Um, but their interests are typically aligned with others and they have the power to make their own decisions and live and uh, have their homes the way they want to. And that's really empowering. And that's, um, you know, that's one of the most exciting things about it. I think it just brings a different level. It kind of elevates your, your living experience when you're in an environment like that. Awesome. You know, uh, I think you touched on some of the uh, lifestyle elements, but is there anything else in terms of lifestyle that a person would expect uh, if they're living in a cooperative like this? Yeah, I mean, I think the critical thing with this is it's going to be what the resident themselves want it to be, you know, because you are making that choice. And, and what we see is that typically when people live in these things, you know, similar interests and, and things tend to emerge. People bring their own talents and things they enjoy doing there, whether that may be a morning coffee or a book club, you know, a group of people that like to do exercise in the morning, or maybe one, we have some green thumbs and they want to be responsible for gardening and doing spring planting at the cooperative. Um, so those types of opportunities tend to emerge, um, but, and also leadership opportunities. So, you know, there is cooperatives are governed by a board of directors um, that help guide the decision-making for all of the shareholders. And there's opportunities to, participate in that or assist the board with tasks or or work or decisions that need to be done. And uh, maybe you're a private person or maybe you like to travel and you don't plan on being there much at all. And that's fine as well. So I think life can really be on your terms. Uh, and, you know, once you peel away kind of all of the uh, the time and the energy that a person has to spend maintaining their own residence and that's taken care of well, for you, um, I guess what the things you've thought you you want to spend time on or do, those are the things you can do. So that's probably different for everybody. Okay, that that's great. I was kind of wondering about the privacy piece because uh, you know some people just kind of like to be private and keep to themselves. So you know there's options for people that want to be kind of mixing it up and around other people and very social. But if somebody wants to be more you know, individual and private, they, that's their call. Um, so that's great. So, you know, maybe you could tell me a little bit more about the building itself, you know, where, where will it be located? What will the residences be like, you know, the amenities, when, what's the timeline for this? All of those things. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so the location is actually um, kind of in what I 
think of as the ex kind of the center of expansion of Thief River Falls. You know, when I go back to Thief River Falls, um, and I was born and raised there, um, it and look at it through different eyes. It's really amazing to me how much the community has grown and how different and innovative it is from when I lived there. So kind of out on that corridor by DigiKey, um, where there's a new roundabout there um, on Highway 32. It's on the east side of the road, just south of the Grand Stay and the Black Cat. So there's a parcel of land there and that's where we plan to build. Um, it's going to be 36 private residences there. Um, all of them are two bedroom, uh, two bath. Actually, I take that our smallest floor plan, five of the 36 have 1.5 bath. Um, but these are going to be really beautiful, uh, brand spanking new residences with upscale finishes. Uh, people who get in on the construction phase will actually be selecting finishes for their counters, for their cabinets, uh, and other things that can personalize it and make it their own. Um, storage is always a big, a big concern when you're kind of downsizing or simplifying. Uh, so we've thought about that. Um, all of our closets are master closets and we have several additional closets planned in all of our uh, residences. And then there's additional storage down in the heated garage as well. And then, you know, kind of more on the, on the fun side, we have uh, balconies on the second and third floor of the building. And then the first floor have private patios, uh, private for each resident. But then we also have a couple that are, are more community-based uh, that people can use. And you know, the best part about having all the amenities that I mentioned earlier is they can be used by residents. So whether you want to reserve it for a birthday party or a dinner party or a little get together on the patio, that's an option that you have. And, uh, you know, we're very excited to, you know, get this building built and have people experience that. Um, I, and then I think you asked about the, the timeline. Yes. So that, that's probably my second most asked question at this point. Um, so how this works is we are looking to get the 70% occupancy before we break ground. Um, so we opened up our reservation period a little bit over a month ago, almost exactly a month ago, uh, through some meetings out at the Ralph, and we're about tracking just under 20% of the way there already. So we're making, yes, very good progress. Um, obviously, with the state of the world right now, um, we haven't held any meetings since our meetings at the Ralph, um, other than some kind of appearances we've made presenting to groups like uh, the Lions and the Rotary and the Golden Pioneers, which was super fun. Um, great organizations. It was fun also to learn a little bit about what they do here uh, in Thief River, you know, in Thief River Falls. And uh, we are going to be shortly through our marketing expanding to other areas and doing that same kind of uh, presentation schedule with other organizations. So based on that, we'll get up to that 70% level. And then we'll break ground as early as spring of 2021. So this coming spring is the target that we're shooting for, uh, subject to mother nature and the ground thawing enough for us to dig into it. And then we would open the doors on the, on the facility uh, right around August of 2022 is what the construction cycle would be. So if we break ground next spring, August of 2022 would be when that would be available. So awesome. well, that's, that is so exciting. It's so exciting. And um, the, the possibility or the, the plan to even start building this spring, that is so exciting and, and uh, looking forward to seeing that. Um, can you talk a little bit about the cost? You know, what does it cost to live in a cooperative? How does that, how does that work? Yeah, um, great question. And the components are, you know, really twofold. So there's that initial down payment that you pay to become a shareholder and become an owner in the cooperative. Um, the share cost is, uh, I'm gonna give you a range because it depends on the size of your residence, is uh, $187,000 to $255,000. Uh, that's the full share cost. Now that said, you can pay as little as 50% of that down to actually move into the cooperative. So, you know, anywhere from 93,000-ish to $129,000 to move in. 
Um, then the second part of how you pay for where you live is the monthly fees. And those will vary based on what I just mentioned. So if you pay 50% of your share cost, you will pay a little bit higher of a monthly fee because then you'll have a piece of that master mortgage uh, that the property would have on it. Um, and those uh, taxes, et cetera, as well as kind of the operating expenses and utilities. Um, or if you have paid your share off completely, then your monthly costs will be lower on an ongoing basis. And what we've prepared right now in terms of looking at the cost, because obviously we don't have an actual building yet and we don't have people living in it. So we've been doing very diligent homework and the city of Thief River has been super helpful um, as have some uh, folks we know in the Fargo area that have similar size buildings with giving us access to utilities numbers and, and other expenses that we know we're going to have. So our range right now on what it would cost per month on the low end uh, for the smallest floor plan, if you pay off your total share, would be just over $600 a month um, and then up into the um, mid $800 range per month. Um, sounds very reasonable for, for what you're getting. Um, it sounds like a, a really reasonable price well, it is cost. Because it really includes almost everything. In fact, I could sit here and list everything that the monthly fee includes, but it's actually shorter to tell you what it doesn't. Um, and we encourage everybody that we talk to, we have a tool that we've developed that lays out all of the expenses that you typically would experience as you know, a homeowner that we all pay, whether it's snow removal or electricity or Wi-Fi, um, mortgage payment, what have you. Um, but our payment includes everything except um, a personal contents insurance policy, which will cover the inside of your residence, uh, which you need to have. Basic, you know, your personal cable package for TV, if you choose to have that or however you choose to do that or, or not. Some people don't have that anymore. Uh, and a landline telephone, which again, with cell phones, not a lot of people are even doing that these days. So um, all of the other things you would think about to run your house are included in our monthly fee. So that includes all of your utilities, including Wi-Fi, including electricity, cable, gas, uh, snow removal, repairs, uh, if you're paying part of the mortgage and insurance, mortgage taxes, et cetera. So it's really holistic. And we've actually done our homework on this um, with a couple of people that live in Thief River Falls and they were very gracious and took out all of their bills and showed us what they pay. And uh, we looked at a house on the north side on Arnold Avenue and we looked at one uh, south of town, a little more south of town, a bigger home. And we're seeing that our prices are highly, highly competitive, if not even slightly lower than some of these folks. If you have a bigger home, uh, for sure, um, you know, four bedrooms, three baths, uh, this is probably going to be very similar or less than what you pay today. So we were pleased. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so the other thing I'm kind of wondering about is what happens if an owner needs to sell their share or you know, in the event that they pass away? What, hap what happens there? Yeah. Um, well, you know, similar to the, the first cooperative I was talking about at the beginning here, and I mentioned a waiting list, um, getting into a cooperative is much more difficult than getting out of cooperative uh, because of things like that waiting list, but also just based on the fact that this is, uh, you're buying a share. So, there's no real estate transaction that takes place, no appraisal, um, no listing of your home, no all of the fees and things that go along with that. When it's time to move out of the cooperative, uh, it's as simple as you or, you know, in the event of someone has passed, as you mentioned, which is an unfortunate fact of life we all have to deal with. Uh, you walk down to the office, you talk to the property manager, and uh, then they will assist you. So they'll reach out to that first person on the waiting list, let them know that there's uh, a residence available or will be shortly. And then you are uh, reimbursed or paid for your down payment that you paid initially in its entirety, uh, plus limited equity. So for the sake of 
easy math for myself. I'll use round numbers. If you put $100,000 down payment when you moved in, um, you lived there 10 years, then when you go down 10 years later to move out, you will get a check for somewhere on the order of $110,000 to $120,000 because you will have recouped that down payment plus gotten that limited equity. Um, which is great. I mean, my our president here likes to say it's like having a savings account you can live in, but then I reminded him that the interest rates on savings account aren't even that good. <laughs> so <laughs> we feel like not only a great place to live and a great community to be a part of, but it's also a really sound financial investment. Yeah, it's it sounds like it. And it sounds like the process of, you know, it, at some point in the future, if you need to you know, sell your share or in the event of a death, it sounds like it's actually easier uh, than, than uh, you know, disposing of other property. If you owned your own home, for instance, um, that might be a more complicated process. So um, this is just so exciting, Lisa. I am, I am thrilled that this is happening. I'm thrilled that you're already, you know, selling some of the shares and, and uh, getting partway towards your goal of um, having 70% um, pre-sold, so to speak. And um, I know that there are going to be questions that people will have about this. Um, so who should, they, who should they contact if they want to learn more about Grace Wynn? Yeah, great question. Well, the, an the short answer is you'll probably be speaking to me directly. <laughs> um, you know, we've got a small team here. Um, so I would encourage anyone to call our toll free number. Uh, that number is 855. Let me make sure I get this right. 855-472-2396. So 855-472-2396. Or we have a ton of great information. Uh, including our email address and a contact form at our website, which is gracewinliving.com. Uh, G-R-A-C-E-W-I-N-L-I-V-I-N-G.com. Um, and just give us a call. I mean, that's the easiest way. Uh, then I can answer live. And if there's anything you stump me on, which if it's a very detailed thing, like how high are the ceilings? I know the answer to that now, um, thanks to one of our residents uh, or uh, a question about the thermometer. I will get back to you very quickly, uh, but I, I always check with the experts. I love knowing who I'm contacting and I love connecting a face and knowing that a real person, um, I can have a conversation with a real person. Uh, that means so much. Um, and if, if people didn't catch uh, or remember your web address or phone number, um, this, this video is posted on the Advanced Deep River website as well. well. We'll put it on our YouTube channel. But on the Advanced Deep River website, we do link to Grace Swin. So you can easily find that link there as well. We'll also post it with the video too. So it will be easy for people to find. Um, but we're, we're excited. We're excited about this development and the, the um, idea that we're going to have another, uh, another type of housing that's available in the community. You know, we love to have what I call the continuum of housing, you know, that we have a lot of um, po uh, potential different types of housing for people to choose from. And, and this is just a great addition to the community. So thank you so much, Lisa. Um, we're so so glad that you came on with us to tell us about this exciting development in Thief River Falls. Um, Lisa Anto with Grace Wynn Living. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.